Hi, Brazfax here, out in the beautiful Utah to bring you a video on this chest rig right here. Why am I doing this in the miserable 100 degree heat? I don't know, because it looks better, I guess. So come along on my journey of suffering as I literally give myself skin cancer in this beautiful weather to talk about this chest rig. I think it's about a year ago now that myself and Hopley Field uh, talked about our chest rigs in my living room with the lowest production style, production quality of all time. What am I, at my job? What is this called again? I'm all getting absolutely sloshed off of cheap beer and old fashions. It's been approximately a year later and now I've used this thing, well, for a year, you can do the math. And I'd kind of like to give you my thoughts on how it's held up over this time. For those not in the know or who haven't seen those videos or simply don't remember like I do because I had to actually look it up right before this video, this is the VEL system or Velocity System Hybrid. So what exactly do we get with the VEL System Hybrid? Well, it's actually a very simplistic uh, pre-built sort of chest rig with a little bit of room for customization. So it's hard to tell initially, aside from the fact that this is Coyote and the rest is multicam. All you really get is, well, all you really get, it, it's a fair bit, uh, four magazines, three pouches up front, and then you have two sections of molly off to the side. It'll be obvious in the pictures where you have uh, two by three molly sections where you can put different pouches for your customizing pleasure. Up front, we have four magazines. Honestly, I'm of the opinion that uh, it can be either four or three magazines, but by God, I really do not like double stacked magazines. There are very few scenarios that need all eight magazines or all six magazines that, uh, that are at all survivable, right? We're not in the same context as a military. I'm not saying don't bring more than six magazines, but that's what your backpack's for, right? So I like less magazines up front because I do want pouches. I do want magazines, but I also like to do this thing called going in the prone. Uh, so I'm a big fan of single stack. Uh, as you notice, or don't notice, there are no pistol pouches on this thing, or pistol magazine pouches. I'm not a pistol magazine pouch kind of guy. I think in the scenarios where you're gonna use a chest rig, well, uh, bringing a pistol is a lot of extra weight in an environment where, well, frankly, what exactly, uh, what exactly is that pistol gonna do for you? I obviously can come up with scenarios where pistols are inherently useful, but it's a trade-off I'm willing to make. And this is one of the few chest rigs on the market that doesn't come with pistol pouches. So another reason why I ended up initially gravitating towards the Velsis hybrid. So let's get a little bit more into how I, what the fuck is that? Let's get a little bit more into how, how I have mine set up. On the right side, we have a generic GP pouch where I just shove random bullshit in it. The default configuration is typically empty like this and it allows me to put whatever I need for that specific day. For now, just for storage sake, more so than anything else, because you know how gloves and hats are, they just fuck off down a, a black hole somewhere and then you never see them again, so you keep buying more and more. So I store my hat and gloves uh, in here. Honestly, I should get just a little hook for the gloves so it doesn't take up the GP pouch. But generally, I actually run this empty and I can put you know generic stuff. Like I'm stacking on an MRE like entree thingy, in here it goes. Uh, little snacks for something else. Maybe it's my dog bowl if I'm doing more of a hike type, uh, hike type scenario, whatever. Generally speaking, because I do this for a living, camera equipment can sometimes go in here. I like leaving it empty. Not every pouch needs to be filled to the brim, in my opinion. Having mission configurability is super good. This is a generic, I don't even know what the heck, GP pouch, um, surplus GP pouch. I might have gotten this one from Venture Surplus. I might have gotten it from eBay. You'll never know. As we come left to right, we have as you can see, my medical pouch. It's a really simplistic medical pouch. It's got a gauze, it's got a ton of wrap, and that's really about it. My uh, training or experience in first aid is distinctly last decade in the 2010 you know, timeframe. And most of the problems back then were solved by, you put the gauze on it and then you, and that's what I have all of my experience in. I've even taught a little bit of that. So yeah, I could probably use uh, a new modern training class. I'm working on it, okay? Give, give, give me a bit. But this is what I'm comfortable with, and this is what I have quick access to. Once again, I'm gonna be running this with a backpack, so I, all my backpacks have more sophisticated medical systems in. Other medical kit that the people in my group that do have extensive medical background in can actually use. And honestly, I could probably use them in a pinch. I, I, understand, I understand how they're used. I just don't have actual real-world practice like I do 
with this stuff. Obviously, I've, I'm not a complete boomer. I do have a TQ here and then extra ones uh, in my bag. So I'll, I'll use a TQ, I'll use gauze. That's good enough for me. Off to the side, I also, I have a paint can opener thingy or paint lid opener, and that's to get stuck casings out. None of my main rifles really get stuck casings. It's more so for testing rifles. Uh, and when the age of Tula coming to an end, uh, it hasn't really gotten any use. In the middle pouch, I have kind of a generic uh, generic pouch. I got my compass. I got some cleany bullshit, mainly for the winter. Uh, you know, this one's, oh, this one's from Opscore, right? It fits in this little stupid bag. And then I also have a note pack, uh, notepad right in the rain with a pen. Uh, the notepad is not here because I'm doing chrono data over there right now. I'm waiting for my gun to cool down so I can shoot some groups with it. Anyway, uh, for the, the compass, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the Sunto. Um, honestly, I'm pretty sure generic Amazon compasses work just fine. I've just had one too many experiences where I'll be like, hey, someone draw an azimuth on that line, let's go head that way, and they'll, they'll give back a reading, and we'll start, and someone on an impulse will also pull up a compass bearing, and they'll get a completely different bearing. And then we'll figure out guy number one, because he had a cheap compass, just got back a false reading because the needle stuck or something like that. So I'm super paranoid about low quality compasses. So yeah, this one's a little bit more expensive. It's not, you know, a Linzatic style. It's just, but this is what I'm used to. And it works a little better on maps, which is typically where I'll actually use one of these. So yeah, I think it's like 40 bucks or something. They're, they're kind of expensive, but. In the final pouch, you guys have seen this. Uh, we got my uh, RT Solo, my, my trusty little, Give me the, yeah, my trusty little monocular. I've been over in great detail why I have this thing. I'm not gonna get into it today. It basically kind of serves as a useful scanning tool when I don't wanna use my rifle or my rifle is just unsuited for the task. It fits perfectly in here and it even clips in so it doesn't wanna pop out. And that's kind of, uh, my radio, I'm running a XTS uh, 2500. Uh, it's a decent radio. I think the era of the XTS is coming to an end. Uh, these are surplus radios, essentially, uh, generally, though not from the military, usually from police and fire departments and the likes, though the military, I believe, has actually used some of them. And they are, um, they're really good. They just don't make them anymore, and they're a huge pain in the ass to program. And they uh, kind of really suck to encrypt because Motorola never wanted you, dirty-ass civilian, to uh, encrypt your shit. So it's actually kind of a huge pain in the ass. Add in the fact that these things are climbing up there in price, like even an unprogrammed, unencrypted one's like 500 bucks. Uh, it's getting a little ridiculous now. It still would make sense if you're willing to program it yourself or have someone program it for you, but the, the price is creeping up there. I'm guessing in a year, it won't even make sense to buy these anymore. But my entire group has one, so I'm, I'm a fan of them. Up here, I got a, I don't remember what this is called. I'll put it on screen. Uh, Disco 32 Big Boy PTT. This thing is huge chungus. It's, it's a big lad, but it's really useful. I've used it in a wide range of scenarios. Uh, recently did airsofting with it. We've done multiple, you know, full kit hikes um, and multi-day trips with these. I like these a lot. The versatility comes in the fact that A, I can leave it like this and it has its onboard, onboard speaker. So I don't need, you know, contacts on and I can just talk like this, like, hey, what's up? How's it going? Um, you know, your water bottle fell out. Or fuck, who knows? And um, yeah, I don't need to wear all that equipment. It's ready to go. I just turn the radio on and I can access it from here, from either the sides or just a big slap on the front. And I got speaker and microphone uh, built in. However, should I wanna use contacts, really cut down that signature, plug it in, put the headsets on, and now it's just a giant oversized PTT. Super flexible. So really good product. The only downside is, of course, the price. These, these PTTs are insanely expensive. And the fact that for some reason, they decided, the guys at uh, Disco 32, to put little lights on it. And when you press it, they light up. They light up pretty bad. Uh, under nods, it's a serious compromising effect. You could see it from from almost 100 yards away as you press the PTT and you're at the correct angle. I've tried spraying over it. I tried sharpieing over it. The damn thing is always glowing and it's it's actually a problem. I think should something ever kick off, I'm taking a screwdriver and stabbing the fuck out of those LEDs to, uh, to fix that. So that's my only gripe, except maybe also these coils. I don't really like coils. Um, coils on PTTs, it, it, it's just gonna route straight into a radio. Why is it coiled? Actually, I probably know this was probably meant for police officers. That's why it has coils. That's why it has a light. Anyway, moving on. That's, that's a lot of talking about 
not the chest rig. Let's get into the chest rig itself. Well, it holds four mags and it's got your typical bungee things for retention. Um, this is probably the part that bugs me the most. Barely compatible with Gen 2 PMAGs. And if you use Gen 3 PMAGs, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, it doesn't work with Gen 3 PMAGs. Uh, it's really hard to show you right here. I'll roll in some footage, but the, the lips on the Gen 3 PMAGs catch on the, the actual, you know, like the webbing, the, the dividers, and you can't get those magazines in. And once you got them in, you can't get them back out because all the mags are pushing against each other and that lip basically traps the magazine in. It's a fucking huge pain in the ass. Uh, with Gen 2 PMAGs, it's a little better, but ultimately because the Gen 2 PMAGs are just a little bit wider and significantly more, you know, frictioned for the lack of a better term, you end up with a situation where you'll load three mags in and that fourth mag, wherever it is, usually over here, I can't get in because uh, it's being pushed over. There's not enough room. If you switch over to metal mags, uh, based, uh, everything kind of just solves itself. There's so much less friction that you can re-index these pretty decently. And, um, you know, they go in far easier because they're just smooth, smooth as my brain. So yeah, you kinda, you're kind of forced to use stenags with these. Something to consider though, um, I don't like that these are double dividers, right? So I'll, I'll show footage once again. There's these double dividers, and every time you try to re-index on these, it tends to catch on those double dividers and bow them inward, and you just end up in a situation where uh, it's, uh, it's, it's tough to uh, re-index this thing. So ultimately, I almost never re-index mags on this, this chest rig. It's just not doable in the heat of the moment, especially if you already have other mags in. That's actually why I have this. Yeah, it's a Flatline Fiberco uh, mag dump pouch. It folds away quite conveniently. I'm not a big uh, mag retention kind of guy, personally. I'm generally gonna run my mags, and if I need to do a tack load, I'm putting it in my pocket. Why? My pocket has way better retention than something like this, and there's nothing in my pockets. So generally, I don't, I don't really use this. Occasionally, there's reasons for me to shove extra bullshit onto my chest rig. Maybe I pick up something, maybe it's someone else's mags, or maybe my pockets are just unavailable because I'm wearing skinny jeans. So yeah, in that case, use something like this. It's not a huge deal. I don't have it out very often because it is a giga snag hazard. So yeah, that's worth considering. So yeah, overall, it's kind of holding up. We're, we're starting to lose some of the, the stitching that hold the mag in, mags in, but that's kind of a thing with nylon gear, it wears. Uh, and I've been using this pretty heavily over a year. I give it about another six months till we lose the stitching between here. If I continue to use metal mags, which are far harsher on chest rigs like this, and um, it'll probably blow out. And then I'll have someone restitch it for me and I'll have another two years to go. So not a huge deal at all. Some extra, get the fuck in there. Uh, some extra things to note, I guess, would be, yeah. I believe this is from Wiseman Company. I, I can't keep the two things straight. Wiseman Company and um, Barrel and Hatchet. I think Barrel and Hatchet's the YouTube channel and Wiseman Company is the, the company. Or maybe it's the other way around. Yeah, it's, they're hard to keep apart. They're basically the same people. But the guys down in Florida at JTAC Ranch, uh, they sent to me one of these to try out. I've been trying it out for about six months now on multiple uh, rucks and uh, you know just generic shooting, especially with backpacks, which is where something like this might come into play. My cameraman, uh, cameraman61 on Instagram, by the way, check him out, also has one of these and we've been running it quite recently. And one other person in our group also has one of these. A lot of people ended up having one of these. They're quite nice. So the, the benefit of these is that because they're a flat surface and they're quite large, the ability for your, your straps to go you know, inboard or to rotate is significantly reduced. That's really important um, when you're wearing a backpack where it tends to want to flip underneath and then the backpack pins it. And then you're just miserable because there's a hot spot the whole time. This basically prevents that from happening, ever happening. It's a little bit more, you know, um, blockage, right? It's a little harder for your, your back to breathe because you got a sheet over it, but ultimately, like, you're sweating balls anyway, so who gives a shit, right? So, yeah, good product. Um, unfortunately, mine's in Coyote because my cameraman stole the, uh, the multicam one. Bastard. My biggest prob probably complaint, aside from how the magazines kind of behave, especially without, uh, you know, being able to use PMAGs, which I have a lot of, by the way, is that these pouches are kind of, kind of poorly sized, right? You see, I have a very specific setup and it kind of works for me, but I find, I think most people will find this, this pouch setup distinctly a pain in the ass. And if you end up having to basically find stuff that fits specifically into these pouches that you weren't going to bring anyway, well, uh, that kind of defeats the whole point. Honestly, the more logical version of this would have been to combine this pouch and this pouch 
for a much significantly larger pouch and then leaving the small pouch off to the side. So yeah, that's that's been my review of the Vell System Hybrid. I mean, obviously I like it. I've been using it for like a year and a little bit thus far and it's holding up to a degree. I mean, it's it's nylon gear. Nylon gear doesn't last forever, especially if you skull drag yourself through uh, what is functionally the bedrock of a giant former lake. That's that. I'm basically going to have a heat stroke momentarily because I've been talking for so long. So thanks for watching. Uh, I appreciate you. I, I want to get out of here. I'm not doing an outro. Bye.